<clears throat> uh, welcome back to the long-awaited return uh, of cooking with Tika. How long has it been since we did one? 2019, 2020, I'd say. Jesus, so two years. Oh, maybe, no, we did one last year, actually. Definitely a year, at least. Okay. Oh, we did a Christmas one, didn't we? Yeah. Uh, so, it's been a while. Yeah. Today, we're cooking some, um, I'd call it a speciality dish, Garf, would you? Uh, we call it Mexican dumplings, but that's not. That's the not name. the name for it. Garf calls it Mexican dumplings. I can't remember the name of it. I call it Mexican dumplings. When, when we're talking about it to each other, we call them Mexican dumplings. Uh, so basically, it's like a shredded meat dumpling that's fried in butter. I wanted to use the deep fat fryer because I think they come out better in like a deep fat fryer. What do other people call them? Just fryers. I think they call them deep fat fryers. Uh, but Garf wants to shallow fry them in butter. Yeah. Because he's team butter all the way. Team butter. Uh, yeah, and that's it. Did you get some team butter t-shirts? Uh, the first part of today started yesterday. So we're going to cut in some footage now. This is just me prepping a deer shoulder. So this is a Sika deer from Sika Stan. Uh, so this is just shoulder meat. Shoulder meat tends to be better for these kind of like slow cooked recipes. There's just a bit better, bit more going on. Um, there's more connective tissue, which tends to make the, the actual meat product at the end a small bit better. It's also like you could call it a sweeter meat. The big advantage for everybody if you're going to do a recipe like this is that shoulder meat's really cheap. Uh, so you can buy diced shoulder meat in the shop. You can buy shoulder meat on the bone if you have a good butcher nearby. Uh, yeah, and you're looking for anything like uh, pork shoulder will do for this, but also lamb shoulder, beef shoulder, or if you can get venison shoulder, they'll all work perfectly for this. I'd highly recommend always leaving the bone on for boiling meat. Yeah. I'd actually, I'd actually go so far as to say I'd never boil meat without a bone in it. Yeah, so if you buy diced shoulder on its own, and you're not doing like using a slow cooker if you just get diced meat on its own you're better to do it like stewed diced meat and um, just to keep those juices a small bit better a lot of time in the slow cooker if it's not on the bone those pieces of meat will get spread out a lot and you'll end up leaching a lot of like the nice juice from the meat and um, when it's on the bone or when it's in a single joint the advantage is everything stays nicely connected together that t-shirt looks great does it mm -hmm. all right so as usual, I'll be doing the baking part of these. So these are, I think, technically called tortillas. This will be the dumpling part of our Mexican dumplings. This, thankfully, is one of the few things in baking that you can be very imprecise with and you can just add things and it'll work out perfectly well once you get the habit of it. So this is by far the most simplest form of bread you can make. What you can actually do with these is you don't even have to make them into the kind of uh, the, the dumpling part, I suppose. You can literally just make the dough and then flatten them out, roll them with a rolling pin and frying them on a frying pan and you can literally make bread in less than 50 minutes. So you would have seen the kind of yeast bread I made last year, so that would have been the most basic kind of oven baked bread you can make. But with these, you can literally pan fry them and they taste phenomenal if you put a bit of butter on them. Some people like to put maybe chili in with them. Some people like to put uh, maybe smoked paprika. I like just a bit of salt. There's a lot of things you can do with them. You can make them kind of herby, garlicky, garlicky and herby. It depends what you want. It's all to your flavor. So all you need is salt, lukewarm water, flour, doesn't really matter, and some fat. So you can use olive oil. You can use fucking pig, rendered pig fat. We're going to use butter today. So we're going to get about two or three tablespoons of this. We're going to microwave it. And then we are going to uh, proceed to make the dumpling part of the Mexican dumplings. It's not racist, is it? Is that stereotyping? No. Okay, I need a cup. Now, I know this is a cooking show, but it's a secret cooking show, so you're not really going to get any uh, ingredients quantities, because it's not that necessary. So we're going to say, this is how we measure it. We go, oh, me and Fitz are fat cunts, we're in the Overeat Anonymous, so we go, I'm going to have a good few dumplings. So 
you just eyeball it, you get this by practice. This is unique Seeky strength, all right? This is a flower. You can make too many dumplings and you can just make bread later if you want. It's definitely too many dumplings. We're using organic flour, but that doesn't mean anything. Organic flour literally means nada. It's actually not that many dumplings. Right, you can, you don't actually have to use baking powder in this because we don't really care if they're rising. If you were making kind of pan fried bread, a little tablespoon or two of baking powder would help it fluff up in the pan. If you don't want that kind of density in the bread, depends on your flavor or depends on your kind of particular desires. So salt, as always in baking, our dry ingredients. Luckily we only have two, we have our butter. And we're just gonna mix it in. Don't be afraid of the butter. So remember, olive oil, pig fat, whatever you want. We're just gonna mix this in by hand. The butter is roasting hot. And we're mixing it in by hand until we're getting kind of a breadcrumb texture. So just next a little bit. The quantity of the fat doesn't matter too much. If you prefer to air on the side of caution and a little bit too much, then not get all of your flour kind of emulsified. So Keep going through with the hand. Doesn't matter if it's still hot, doesn't make a difference, no big deal. Might do to burning your hand, but that's not a problem. How are you, Fitz? I'm great. So, you looking forward to this? Yeah. So, we just wanna get all of that. So, no clumps, really. We wanna chew our fingers, and we're just kind of mashing it out. Now, if there's actually Mexican people who are experts in this watching, just ignore the name Mexican, because that's not really what we're going for here. But it's, it's where the inspiration has come from. It's inspired. Yeah. It's an Irish version of Mexican dumplings. Maybe it's Irish dumplings. So, just as much as possible. Run it through, make sure all the flour gets the fat. Olive oil works perfectly well. Extra virgin olive oil. You could use smoked pig fat, as I've seen some people use. Smoked pig fat? Yeah, from that smoky flavor. It's pretty bougie though, so. You know, so people like to use forks and stuff, but it's good to use your hands when you're baking. Is it? Why, why is it better to use your hands? Because I'm not a bitch. No, you can use the, uh, yeah. Well, you have to use your hands for this because you want to get the butter through it, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. but for the next part, you don't have to. You could use a fork or whatever. So advice for adding the water, just slightly warm water. Too hot a water will fuck up your dough and make it real pasty. So just above room temperature, even rat room temperature will do. It doesn't matter because we're not looking for raising it. Uh, as always, when you're eyeballing ingredients for baking, you add in the dry or the wet stuff very, very cautiously. Now you can always add in more flour if you add in too much water, but um, you don't want to be adding further ingredients and messing up stuff. So you'd be surprised how little water you need. This feels great. Maybe organic dough is the way to go there. Maybe it's, it maybe it's. Maybe that's the difference. So, there are so many dumplings. Again, this texture, unfortunately, is you'll know when you feel it. It's like a good snatch or a good clean or a good squat. Once you get used to it, you'll be like, oh, that's exactly what I need. Usually people describe it as like silky smooth when it comes to uh, doughs. So, I'm still keeping the bowl because I'm trying to gather up everything as much as possible. Do you like baking, there? No, I like cooking meat more than baking. Baking doesn't get my juices flowing. But you love bread. Love bread, yeah. It's, but you just never take the time. No. If we tried to roll this out now, we'd kind of, our dumplings. That's too much. We, and we're fucked it up. We would end up, um, it would be too brittle for our dumplings. For oh no, what if we had no rolling pin? So we're getting, just wanna beat the dough 
until we get this kind of silky smooth texture. If it's too dry, it'll be too brittle and you won't get that silky smooth. If it's too wet, it'll be too pasty and it won't be silky smooth. When it comes to beating your dough, you know, just do what you like, you know. Figure out what categories you like. What do you want to beat your dough to? Maybe it's the PNAS journal. So you won't get that kind of elastic -y stuff, that elastic -y kind of traditional bread stuff when you add yeast, for example, but you'll get very close to it with this, but we don't really care about that. Will we get free kitchen utensils? Who knows? Do we want sponsorships? No. They call it activating the gluten. Oh. But I don't know if that means anything. You're certainly affecting the proteins, but there's no protein in bread. It's gonna leave that for like 10, 15 minutes and let it rise a little bit and we'll be right back. So what we have there is the slow cooker meat that we had from last night. What we're gonna do now is like decant it out into a pot. We'll shred it up. Ideally, this would have had a small bit longer, um, but it's kind of fulfilling the need of falling off the bone and you'll see that in the uh, the bougie footage that's coming up next. All we're gonna do, pull it off the bone, get it in chunks, then we're gonna shred it up, chop it up into fine little pieces. We'll add a small bit more of a, uh, of a kind of herb mix to it. Then we'll fry it off, just make it nice and crispy and we'll give it to Gert for the dumplings. Mm. So the key for this is the, uh, the falling off the bone effect. As I said, if it had a small bit longer, it would be better, but it's still quite good, like it's been in there overnight. As you can see, it's pretty much like just falling out. These are like museum quality, which is what you want your, your bone to look like. We'll just pull out those two pieces of bone. Now the dog is getting excited, hey? Then once you get it across here, it's very, very simple. You definitely want to make sure your chopping board has a runoff ridge for this because uh, it gets quite juicy. So this is what you end up with, a load of like diced, shredded, mashed up meat, whatever you want to call it. Uh, you want it to be as soft as possible. Any of your like harder lumps from the outside of the, the joint should just be pulled out. Uh, they can go to Seiko later. <laughs> Once you get all that together, you have your fryable mash. Before you start frying it, we'll just season it. For our seasoning mix, and this is really up to you, uh, but I like to go with a mixture of about 50-50 mild chili powder to hot chili powder uh, because the flavor of the chili is actually really, really good and the hot chili powder will blow your head off or it'll blow these two Irish lads' heads off anyway. Uh, so good, healthy helping of both. Then the last thing, just some of the uh, smoked paprika and then salt and pepper, but we'll just taste it first. Because this was cooked with some garlic, with some onion, and a fair amount of salt and pepper in it, you do need to kind of taste it before you, uh, before you mix it, or before you over season it. Oh, it's hot, Gerv. Spicy. Yeah. To the frying pan. Watch out. Usually here we use oil because we're normal people and don't use butter all the time, but because it's garf, we're gonna use butter. No, no, go ahead and use processed vegetables, it's okay. So adding a small bit of fat. Realistically, if you're not using venison or if you're using a beef shoulder, if you're using pork shoulder in particular, you definitely won't need to add fat at this point. 
because there's going to be plenty of fat in the meat. This meat is very lean. You'll have almost no fat in here. Um, so this little bit of a fry up will just change the texture of it slightly. We'll get it some added fat and uh, it's good to go then. This is, this is my non-standard frying pan now, so I'm afraid my wrist action is going to be a bit off. What's your standard frying pan? Uh, the one I have at home. Why? Oh, yeah. Just haven't been able to find one that's peak my interest. It's I hard to beat Tefl. You know, just yeah. bog standard Tefl. You just don't want those forever chemicals. Because you know what the bad thing about forever chemicals is? <laughs> Give a guess. Uh, are they bad because they don't exist? Or are they bad because they exist in your head and you can't make them not exist in your head? No, they are very well established. Are they? An entire group of chemistry called Forever Chemicals. Go on. Don't they call Forever? Because they don't go away. Because they don't fucking go away. And guess what they do when they're in your body? What do they do? Don't go away either. And what are they doing when they're in your body that's bad? Uh, big C. Big C? Yeah. And Bleeding? Yeah. So from Teflon coating on pants? Yeah, not great. Really? Yep. But you use the Teflon coated pan every day? I don't use a copper pan. Yep. Because of that? Mm -hmm. My god. Eddie Listen. Bravo, here we come. I know you uh, have no concern for your own health. But don't, don't mislead the viewers. So this is where you're going to end up getting your like, shredded meat will end up breaking down further mm -hmm. and you end up getting like those little crispy edged corners which is exactly what you want. Okay, time to make our tortillas, dumplings. We don't actually have a rolling pin, which I did not know about. But we make, make needs do. So we've got a handle of a Les Sospen. So cutting into what you size you want your dumplings. You can make very big dumplings. You could make one huge dumpling. You can make little tiny dumplings. I prefer a tinier dumpling than a larger dumpling. Yeah, yeah. More crispiness, like, you know. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. And of course, more bread. There's no judge. We don't judge here. Um, this still feels great, not gonna lie. Silky? Um, no, so for tortillas, you kind of want more of a pastry kind of dough, you know? And what would be a pastry dough versus a silky dough? So pastry dough is a higher fat content than them a little bit. Ooh. For tortillas, I prefer a little bit closer to a uh, this uh, less bready because one of the issues with pan frying or deep frying breads is you may not get the cook all the way through, you know. Whereas a higher fat content will just taste better than when you cook it. In my opinion, of course, that's up to the user, you know. It's up to them. So we're going for seven dumplings. Okay, so we're just going to try to roll these out. So, goal of these is as thin as you can possibly get without it tearing, because you want it to cook all the way through, you know? But you don't want it so thin that you can't pick it up. Now, the great thing about this meat is it's quite dry. So if you'd cooked vegetables with this, you know, it'd be kind of moist. So you'd really need to be careful where you're putting this on, because when you pick it up, you may get a saggy bottom, a wet bag effect. I'm not going to lie, that turned out perfectly well. So obviously, the smaller our dumplings are, the less filling you can spread out. Careful. Again, cheese to your desire. It's the seal. So these are kind of like, So if you just made this dough and you were pan frying the bread, you could actually leave it dry and it works much better. Uh, just like a ripping hot pan for like 30 seconds if you're just cooking the dough. So 